This first one right here hides the project pane. So the, this little pane over here on the left side will go away if you click this. And if you click it again, it reappears. Or if you hit this little X up here, like I said, there's more than one way of, of performing a function in core. If you hit that X, it does the exact same thing. And it automatically takes the, the unchecks that box right there. So if you just click on that, it brings the project pane back up. Now the project pane will always be on the left-hand side. The elements pane will always be in the middle. And the properties dialog, the properties box will always be on the right side. So this middle button right here, this, this hides the elements pane. This one right here, or you could click on the X. Okay. And this last one here hides the properties box over here. So this last one right here, this shows you your elements in a table format. Now this is very useful for when you want to quickly search for orphan requirements and show traceability in your different reports. I'm going to move over to the create folder icon, which is right here. So what this does is basically creates a new folder. Uh, it's useful for organizing your different elements when they become numerous to keep track of by yourself. So since I have requirements outlined, if you click on it, it actually creates a new folder within that. We'll just call it folder one, we'll leave it like that. Now to create a little plus, if you hit that plus, there's your folder. So if, say for instance, it's a unmanned aerial vehicle, you're gonna have the air vehicle section, could be folder one, and then the power plant system could be folder two, the avionics systems could be folder three, the weapon systems could be folder four. So you can break it out, break all your requirements out into different folders like that. Okay, so if you have your requirements in here, and you click on requirement here at the top, and you click on this, this will actually show you all the elements inside of all the folders as italicized text, and I'll get, I'll get to that later. Um, if you delete a folder, it does not delete the requirements that reside inside the folder. This is used just to organize different requirements. Deleting the folder does not delete the requirements inside the folder. They, if the requirements that are inside the folder, once this folder is deleted, defaults to the next higher level. So if you have, let's create another subfolder in folder one. There's a folder one inside folder one. If I were to delete this folder one, which had requirements in it, those those requirements from this folder one would default to this folder one. Okay. So this box allows you to quickly create a new folder. This one shows you all of the requirements without being hidden by folders. This one creates a new element in here. So let's create a new requirement right here. If we click on this one, that creates a new requirement. So we'll just keep it as requirement 01. There's our requirement. And now we see these other boxes starting to light up over here. Now this button right here, this is for renumbering an element. And I'll show you how to renumber elements when I have more than one requirement and I've had some relationships established between those requirements. This box right here deletes that selected requirement. So if you delete that, you can create a brand new one. Once it's deleted, remember, once it's out of the database and you save it, it's gone forever. And there's no undo, so you have to save often. If you want that requirement back, then you've got to go back to a previous version of your, of your database. So you can select more than one element by, um, let, me, let me create multiple instances of requirements here. So you can select more than one requirement by holding down either control and selecting individual ones. Right now I have one, five, and ten outlined because I use the control key and there's seven. You can add different ones to it and you can delete just those. Remember there's no undo. Or you can hold down the, the shift key. Select the first one, hold down shift, and select the last one and that selects all of them. And then you can delete all those. So we create some more in here. Just recreate some more requirements in here just to use as examples, okay? Now another part of this right here is permissions. I've never used the permissions. This is for like a team effort if you don't want, you know, the engine subsystem guy touching the air vehicle subsystem requirements, then you can lock those out. This 
button takes you to the properties pane, which is exactly what you see on the right hand side, but it breaks it out all by itself. So if we click on that, now we have requirement one broken out into its own window right here. Basically, this box right here in its own window, which is right here. Okay, so I'll go ahead and close out of that. These other items right here, these icons, I'll be introducing to those to you as I walk you through the element property pane on the right side of your screen right here, uh, which will be in a subsequent video. Today I've shown you how to download and install Core. I've showed you around the Core interface to include the menu, the toolbar across the top, the project pane on the left side, the elements pane in the middle, and briefly the elements property sheet on the right side. Thanks, and tune in for the next video, which I'll begin showing you around the elements property sheet for requirements.